I just finished running a conformational search for cyclohexa in the next member of the cycloalkane series. I used the optimization limit normal because I began to generate too many conformations when this was set to very loose. Under normal, I generated six conformations, and you can see them here. The first one has an energy that's much lower than the other five, 10.95 compared to 18 or 19 kilocalories per mole. The first one is known as the chair conformation, and go ahead and look at it very carefully on your own. Study each adjacent carbon-carbon bond, and notice that there's almost ideal staggering between every adjacent carbon-carbon bond in the chair form. That's what gives it a very ideal, almost ring strain free conformation because its torsion as well as its angles are near the ideal positions. The next four conformations are what are known as the twist boat form. If you look on carbon atoms opposite to one another in the ring, you'll notice that you cannot line up the carbon hydrogen bonds perfectly from one side of the ring to the other. That's how we can recognize it as the twist boat conformation. You can also see that there's quite a bit of eclipsing, not perfect eclipsing, but quite a bit of eclipsing going on in these twist boat forms. Down here at the very bottom, the very last conformation that we generate has an energy of about 19.4 kilocalories per mole. And now you can see across the ring, there's perfect alignment of carbon-hydrogen bonds. And that's how we can recognize this as the boat conformation. You can see that there's eclipsing interactions on opposite sides, of the carbon atoms on opposite sides of this boat. And it's for that reason that the boat energy, uh, that torsional strain is what gives the boat energy its high 19.38 kilocalories per mole. Let's use the boat conformation to begin a molecular dynamics trajectory. There are two things to notice in the case of cyclohexane from these dynamics simulations. The first is that the molecule always remains in the boat or the twist boat form over the time scale of this molecular dynamics run. It never relaxes back into that most favored chair form. The second thing to notice is that compared to cyclopentane, the ring atoms pucker at a much slower pace. So cyclohexane seems to be moving almost in slow motion as far as ring puckering goes. If we were to perform this molecular dynamics simulation over a much longer period of time, we would not only re observe it relax back into the chair form, but we would also observe the chair undergo a process known as ring flipping. Let's examine the chair form in more detail. Here's a line angle drawing of the chair form, and what you can see are two different types of substituents. In red, labeled A, are the axial substituents. They are vertical, up or down, relative to some average plane that would slice through that cyclohexane chair. The second type of substituents are these equatorial substituents, colored blue, labeled E, and they're around the perimeter of the ring, almost in the average plane. A line of sight directed in this way from this atom to that atom would see the Newman projection that's shown over to the right-hand side. So, for example, uh, this person's line of sight would see on his or her left that atom, which corresponds to that atom in the Newman projection, and this atom here, which would be on the right-hand side. So there's essentially two Newman projections with the bridge atom, I'll color it something different. The bridge atom located right along the line of sight. What you can see in the Newman projection are the average plane with the axial substituents lying above and below that plane, and then the equatorial substituents along the perimeter. It'll be clearer when we look at a three-dimensional structure. Now let's take a look at the structure of the chair form in three dimensions. Here's that most stable chair form. If we go ahead and look at that molecule carefully, you'll see that there are three substituents that are axial and pointing up, and three substituents that are axial and pointing down. And then if we rotate the molecule, you can see that around the perimeter are each of the equatorial substituents. There's six of them all together. Next, let's find that Newman projection starting from this view, which is basically looking from the top of the ring down, we can rotate 90 degrees so that we're going to look along this carbon-carbon bond and this carbon-carbon bond as part of the Newman projection. So rotate that 90 degrees, 
and we fall into that Newman projection view. The bridging atom in front that's heading up is that atom. The bridging atom in back that's going in the down direction is that atom. Here you can see the two Newman projections on the left and on the right with the almost perfect staggering between adjacent carbon-carbon atoms. In the next webcast, we'll look at the ring flipping process in great detail.